Hello and welcome to Politiscope. I am Coyote Ladeindi. After several assurances from the Independent National Electoral Commission, ANEC, that all was said for the February 16 election, by 2 a.m. on the scheduled date, the Commission announced a shift by one week. This did not only come as a shock to many, including President Muhammadu Buhari. Some described the move as embarrassing and insensitive to Nigerians who were ready to cast their ballots. On today's program, we should spend a great time discussing the implication on the social, economic, and political spheres of the country. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we will talk some more of what transpired, resulting in the postponement and subsequent reactions. Please stay there. Following a careful review of the implementation of its logistics and operational plan and the determination to conduct free, fair, and credible elections, the Commission came to the conclusion that proceeding with the election as scheduled is no longer feasible. Reactions have continued to trail the postponement of the presidential and parliamentary elections in a dramatic nighttime move for one week. The various reactions are a mixture of anger, frustration, and resignation. Our correspondents across the country, we were on a standby to cover the election, give us various candidates' reaction as well as the electorates. Many socially conscious Nigerians had been looking forward to February 16, 2019, to make their long awaited choice in who leads them at the center and National Assembly. The news of the date change was met with hostility and anger, having gone through the same experience in the last two general elections. Quotes from party degrees, chieftains and political influencers sums up the emotions following the ANEC decision. The national chairman of the PDP, Uche Sakandos, in a press release which read in part says, Shoddy the arrangement for this election by the ANEC is a deliberate, predetermined agenda of President Buhari to cling onto power. The spokesperson of Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, Imo Uguchinere, in a related development, say these acts of sabotage no doubt ruined the preparations of INEC for the elections. The presidential aspirant of African Action Congress, Omoyeli Shuware, registering his displeasure, also say action speaks of complete ineptitude and lack of transparency of President Buhari's regime. Human rights activist Ebu Adegburua say postponement of elections is unacceptable. The APC Campaign Council, through its spokesperson Festus Keyamo, a senior advocate of Nigeria, says, We received the news with great disappointment. While the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, trailed the federal government by saying, Nigerians will defeat this tyranny. The display of public disappointment may not stop anytime soon over the latest INEC decision. How this plays out at the end of the day will be of keen interest to many observers. Residents of Dara, the president's hometown, woke up this morning to the news that the Independent National Electoral Commission had postponed elections until next week, Saturday. Well, this town is slowly coming awake. Shops are still closed, but business activities are gradually resuming. You see people gathering around in groups, discussing the development. Now, this development has affected people in different ways. There are those that are not happy that elections have been postponed. We have fully prepared because, Allah. as I said, that I'm among the workers that are going to conduct the election so that by then we had that the election was postponed. We are not happy with that on what, what was happening. So what's the reason for no, no day, today no election? I don't know why is the reason. But then there are those that understand that two states do not have electoral materials to vote and understand that elections have to be postponed. They say there was a two states that are here. They say that uh, 
the something for the election, the bad the bad peoples, they come and collect it, they come and respond, they do the thing that is no good. So I support the election, but I have I have hope. I support the election on, on next week. People have braved the cold to come out for these elections, but have to wait a full week to cast their votes. But the enthusiasm has not waned. As the people of Dara resume their activities on this day when elections should have held, they wait another shot to perform their civic responsibilities. The president continues. We now urge INEC to ensure not only that materials already distributed are safe and do not get into wrong hands, but that everything is done to avoid the lapses that resulted in this unfortunate postponement and ensure a free and fair election on the rescheduled date. Former Vice President Chiko Bakar is obviously dampened and low in spirit following this development. According to him, it is wrong for any electoral body to have cancelled elections or postponed it a few hours to the election period. As I said, I'm appealing to Nigerians to please come out and vote. And I'm asking them to be patient about it. Yeah, are you concerned about the fact that sensitive materials have already been deployed to the field? Well, as long as they are secured and they are in the right uh, you know, uh, places, uh, there is no cause for alarm. The general situation here in the state is that of shambu and disappointment as all spirits appear very low. As at 7.15 a.m. in Lagos, the news that the 2019 presidential and national assembly elections had been postponed by the Independent Electoral Commission had gone viral. The less traveled roads of the metropolis was a clear indication that the people were ready to perform their civic responsibilities. But with the date of the elections moved to 23rd February and 9th March, INEC has given Lagos residents a reason to talk. This were the reactions of Lagos residents to the postponement. It's a kind of disappointment. Everybody prepared to do the election. They slept in their RACs and at the middle of the night they were told that all their preparations is just useless, that they are not going to do anything anymore. You see the security operatives going back and we have invested a lot. If I need really have the interest of the nation and the council is there we should just key into it. The thing they do no good. Me I don't buy food for us. Yeah, today I would I go sleep for us. My girl come come for five o'clock say they don't cash for Alexa. Ah oh, this way I do no good. They will tell us yesterday around four, three, everybody go know. So I'm don't travel far away. Look at the coppers now that went to spend their night at Iraq waiting for the election to happen. All of a sudden this morning they just cancelled it just like that, leaving people in the open at night by that kind of time. It wasn't, it wasn't just it at all. The residents said that the commission owed them an apology following the postponement of the election because it has put some of them in a difficult situation. They also want INEC to take all necessary steps to ensure successful delivery of the much awaited elections. The disappointment all over their faces. They said they had put off every activity just to cast their votes before the startling news came. What is happening is not supposed to be because Nigerians have the authority to protest against this it has never been it has never happened before i'm not happy over it because um, we are already prepared my voters has is here with me but around three o'clock i find out that uh, they are postponed the election I'm, i feel bad though many people don't go travel please say a vote go get ahead you just follow everybody hand for them for them to have postponed the election is a disaster to the nation at the INEX zonal office in port Harcourt, ad hoc staff engaged for the elections had already reported for duty when STV News visited. Like other Nigerians, they were equally shocked by the shift. Behind me are commercial drivers engaged by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. 
for the distribution of election materials. We want to find out from them why they are still here, despite the announcement that this election has been postponed. They engaged us in yesterday to carry, to convey the election material to various units. Then we were here this morning, they told us that the election has been postponed. And our money, we have not seen our money till now. You know, the money involved is almost two or three million naira. We can't come here by that time with that money. We promised and the money is on the way coming. Overall, the economic and legal implications remain a huge burden to the nation. Professor Oke Onochiku and Barrister Nazi Galue have this to say. There is a lot of manpower loss in production. If you check, you know, almost all the state governors declared public holiday on Friday. So most government establishments did not work. Even when they have the power to so shift the elections, by days to the election, they ought to have known if there are certain security challenges that they think that can preclude them from the elections. The big question many are asking is whether the new dates are sacrosanct or there will be more postponements to come. Later in the day, the INEC chair apologized to Nigerians and elaborated on what led to the decision at the stakeholders' meeting. Faced with these challenges, we initially thought that we only require a maximum of 24 hours to resolve the logistics issues involved and complete our deployment for the election. This would mean shifting the elections to commence on Saturday, 17th February 2019. Some sensitive materials have been distributed. However, all such materials have been retrieved and will be taken back to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Ahead of the presidential election, there are permutations of a tough contest between the two main presidential candidates, President Muhammadu Buhari of the APC and Atiku Abubakar of the PDP. What are the likely strongholds of these political gladiators? As of the last count released by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, 72 presidential candidates will be jostling for the nation's number one seat for the next four years. It is incontestable that two of these 72 candidates stood out as the major candidates, the incumbent President Muhammadu Buhari of the APC and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar of the PDP. On typical of past elections, many political pundits are having difficulty in predicting possible winner between these two leading candidates. Unlike the immediate past election, the votes were sharply divided on religions and ethnic grounds, with former President Goodluck Jonathan winning in Christian southeastern state and south southern state, including Ekiti and Southwest, while current president won majorly in the Muslim northern states and southwestern states. Other factors played out in his emergence, ranging from political realignment, internal wranglings in PDP, alleged international conspiracy, and others. This time around, it is a battle between the two northern candidates who are courting other regions through their vice presidential candidates. A close review and monitoring of this election indicates that in South South, while it may be easy for analysts to predict easy victory for PDP candidate Atiku Abubakar in Rivers, Delta, Cross River and Bayesa, the coast may not be so clear in Akwaibom and Edo states. In Akwaibom, the reason is not far-fetched. The defection of former Governor Gatsui Lapabio is reported to be a major setback for ruling PDP in the state as this may make APC put up a big fight. For Edo State, the state has been under the leadership of APC, but the last presidential election went in favor of PDP. But this time around, analysts argue that either APC or PDP can win since the two candidates are not from South South. Unlike last election, when PDP candidate Goodluck Jonathan is from the South South. In Southeast, the region has been a strong base of PDP, especially in presidential poll. While it is true that the five states in the region are not governed by PDP, the region traditionally vote for PDP at the federal poll. 
However, the Anambra State looks up for grab as the governor, Willie Obiano, seems to be a mortal political enemy of the PDP running mate, Peter Obi. Recent developments suggest that Governor Obiano may tacitly be supporting President Buhari. There are some who believe that Governor of Ebony State, David Umahi, despite being a PDP governor, may be romancing President Muhammadu Buhari. In Southwest, on papers, anyone should predict easy win for President Muhammadu Buhari because currently all the six states in the region are governed by APC, coupled with the fact that the vice presidential candidate of the party is from the region, unlike PDP, whose vice presidential candidate is from Southeast. But a deeper look into the voting pattern suggests that Oshun State, judging from the last controversial governorship election result, the stake is higher. Likewise, Oyo, the current governor seems not to be enjoying the support of general populace as the state appears open to more than three parties at the governorship poll. To the north, in northwest, bookmakers are quick to remind us that the zone naturally belongs to President Muhammadu Buhari, but the defection of former Kanu State Governor Rabi Ukwankwenso may not make Kanu State a swing state for APC. The recent PDP rally confirmed so with a case of stampede with red-capped Kanu residents in attendance. Gombe State Governor has remained a PDP governor even when the presidential candidate of PDP was not from the north. Yes, Katsina, the home state of the president, is not negotiable. But is it safe to say Sokoto State is for the president with Governor Aminu Tambowa now back to PDP? There might be need to wait for the outcome on February 16. To the North Central, interestingly, the ruling APC is not leaving any stone unturned despite the defection of Senate President Bukola Saraki and the incumbent Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed to PDP. APC is deploying resources to win back the state through the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, as arrowhead. Will this election mark the end of Saraki dynasty? These analysts say it is a different tax to break the long-held hegemony. In Kogi, the ruling APC has a lot of work to do with the perceived abysmal performance of the sitting governor, Yahya Bello. Is Niger, Nasarawa, Benue, Plateau still going for APC like in 2015? Many analysts disagreed because of the rising wave of headers, farmers' clashes. Is protest votes in favor of PDP candidate the possible option? We will wait and see. To the northeast, this is the region of PDP candidate. Despite coming from this region, there are indications that the people of Baronu Yobe, where insurgency thrived greatly before these administration, are likely to give a thank you vote for President Muhammadu Buhari for degrading the Boko Haram insurgents. Though there are still pockets of attacks, the region may have a big tax in choosing between Atiku Abubakar and President Muhammadu Buhari. In all these permutations, the two candidates will be seeking higher votes and one quarter votes in two thirds of the states across the Federation as required by law. Otherwise, the election will lead to runoff, which is the second ballot. While the electoral umpire INEC is busy ensuring a credible poll, some organizations have taken up tax to cross-check the process and the outcomes. One of such organizations is Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement, YAGA. The method adopted is known as Parallel Vote Tabulation, PVT, which is data-based. Well, now we are in a digital age Information moves very, very fast, and uh, I think it's in the interest of the public that um, information are uh, fact-checked and uh, 
data-based. So what we do as an organization is to provide the journalists with data-based information. Our PVT is data-driven, nothing else. No emotions are involved, it's just data. You use the data to run your conclusions on election issues. The parallel voter ablation methodology is the gold standard um, uh, methodology for observing elections using statistical principles and technology. And using these tools, what we do is collect data and information on the process. Um, and this processing data includes setup, opening, accreditation, how Cadrida is functioning, the presence of party agents, um, as well as the accounting process. And all these puts us in a position um, to ascertain whether there's compliance with electoral guidelines, um, as well as the Electoral Act. The second is the results. So we collect results from our sample polling units. So we deploy observers to a representative sample of polling units. And these observers send in reports using text messages to our data center. And for the presidential elections, our data center will be in Abuja. And we'll be in a good position, actually, to verify the accuracy of the results. If there is fraud in this election, the Yaiga Africa watching the vote using the PVT is able to detect fraud. And we will tell Nigerians, because the Yaiga Africa watching the vote is driven by data, beholden to none, and it's for all Nigerians. The group explains that their aim is not to undermine the statutory role of INEC, but to promote transparency of the process. There is a significant difference with um, what we do at Watching the Vote. And Watching the Vote employs um, parallel vote tabulation um, in, prevent, in providing an independent evaluation of the elections, as well as um, verifying the official results declared by INEC. That's why it's called parallel um, vote tabulation. And what we do is actually performing our role as citizens in ensuring oversight, um, in building the confidence of citizens in the electoral process. So INEC is the institution that has the statutory responsibility for organizing elections. We don't organize elections. We are not regulators. What we do is we are observing and providing oversight on the process. So that's, our, that's the role that we play. So it's completely different. This initiative does not leave out journalists who are keen on probing results released by INEC. What it does for them is that in a predominantly illiterate society, when information go out, it has to be fact-checked. And what our information does for the journalists is that if it comes to us and picks, he will be sure. For instance, in this election, we're going to deploy a lot of staff that will be on ground. So when you get information from them, this information is processed, checked, and cross-checked. The model, like I said, is uh, going to afford us the opportunity to have another insight on whatever goes down during the election. And it is quite good because it's a, it's a methodological process that deals with statistics, that deals with ICT, things we can really put our hands and wrap our minds around. So it's not based on any conjecture or any partisanship as it were. So whatever goes down, we know it's verifiable, it's objective, and we can always rely on them. So what I think about this um, alternative platform is that it would um, help to authenticate, you know, sort of verify the results that will be announced by INEC. You know, I've, um, I've followed them in Anambra and then in Osho, uh, and their result, um, the result of the, the outcome of their monitoring activities actually tallied with what INEC did. Uh, so I'm actually looking forward to a time maybe when their results will be different from INEC. It is true that this is not the first time Yaga is using this method, but it comes handy based on the increased suspicion on the integrity of the poll. I'm afraid this is what we call it a wrap on today's edition of Politics Code. Till I come your way next time, I remain yours truly, Coyote.
Lade de, see you bye for now.